We can't, we can't cover the whole cost. Uh, so many of you in the audience, you know, you are, you are business owners, and it's very important to discuss the impact, the impact of uh, development, you know, that, the impact that they will have on our small businesses. It's very really important for you to be here, and I applaud you for actually take the time and, and come and listen to what these experts, these successful people, what they've done and, and how they've done it, and what, how they can include us in the decision-making process, you know, sometimes, so that we can be part of the... Uh, the uh, 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 process all together. So, and uh, you will have the opportunity also to ask them questions uh, and how the future the, of North Miami uh, web redevelopment could affect uh, uh, this community. This community is very dear to us, and you heard the president said when I first came here in '79, and I actually I used to work in the restaurant right there on the, on US One. This would be called uh, Bagel Nash. Uh, maybe many of you may not know what I'm talking about. It was a Jewish uh, a bagel shop. We had all different types of uh, cream cheese, different flavors and everything. As a result of having that critical mass. So you won't see us going and buying one piece over here and one piece over there. And we, and we always focus on um, urban neighborhoods. We, we love pedestrian neighborhoods. When you have pedestrian neighborhoods, that's when you can have kind of thriving energy. And so all of these neighborhoods where we have gone typically share the same kind of traits. Either they have something interesting architecturally, which Wynwood does not. Um, they have kind of a grid system of, of pedestrian kind of uh, opportunities. Um, and most people think of them as very hopeless. They're dilapidated, they are downtrodden. Um, and so we came to Miami Beach in, two th in, uh, in, the, in the mid 80s. My dad turned the corner on Ocean Drive, fell madly in love, bought a property a month for 18 months. No bank would finance, none. Um, and so kind of borrowed, begged, did not steal. Um, and so. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was really, really cool. And seeing you know, how you guys took Winwood into what it is now, the vision that that takes is incredible. Um, so I want to go ahead and uh, invite up our moderator and our panel to come forward and have a seat on the comfy couches, and we'll get started on the panel discussion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and first of all introduce our moderator, um, and I know we've been talking about everybody has strict time, but our moderator is also my boss, so she can talk as long as she wants, whatever she wants to do, I don't, I don't mind. Thank you, Sam. Good afternoon. Yeah. Oh, we can do so much better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to welcome all our businesses. Um, the luncheons were designed for North Miami businesses. So I want to see a show of hands. How many businesses do we have represented here? Put those hands up. Put those hands up. Okay, we want to recognize our businesses that are here today. The interaction is intended for business engagement. We have a very exciting discussion um, for today. Today's topic has been rightly dubbed straight talk. And we intend to have a very candid conversation with what we consider our A-listers from the South Florida region. So we'll be unpacking for today's discussion what it really takes to create great developments in a city like North Miami. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I think that when you bring more retail and you bring tenants that are draws, Causeway Square as an example, LA Fitness, it brings people to the area, not necessarily just shopping in the retail component of that project below LA Fitness, but in the area in general. Um, there's been a resurgence um, in that area of, of other tenants, Whole Foods a few years ago before that, Home Depot, which speaks to the demographics because they're all doing extremely well. Lots of shoppers there. And the cross shopping is important. It also brings about employment, and if there's more opportunities in a project for people to work, typically people want to work closer to home, and so it perhaps brings more residents to the area. And I think that it just, it, it perpetuates itself, and it just puts its, its roots into the community. And so to me, it's basically about keeping up with trends. You know, as far as, I mean, talking about the e-tailing, I can go on and on and on, and I'll spare you guys. Um, on basically how, I mean, I know what happens at our properties. A lot of the retailers, because of Wall Street, are very motivated to increase and show increases on their on their web sales versus their brick and mortar stores. And they offer free shipping, 
and they credit their stores uh, on the web when they ship. So if they ship you 10 suits for $1,000 a piece, they have a $10,000 web sale, and then they go return it at Nordstrom, and they keep two. We have a negative $8,000 brick and mortar day, and they have a positive 10,000, which is basically artificial inflation of, of web sales and artificial deflation on a brick and mortar. So it's really not as bad. And they also are not, um, I think that what's gonna happen in the future, at least what I'm seeing from the retail world, and you know, also in the restaurant world, is the consumer, the younger consumer, is demanding a different kind of service and quicker service. So if you go to Macy's right now, which is our tenant, and I shouldn't say anything negative about it, but really the experience of finding a salesperson, finding someone at the register, checking out, it's not a smooth transaction. So I really believe that the retailers are gonna start catching up with maybe not get to the level of what Amazon is doing, where you take stuff and just walk out of the store and it charges you automatically, but pretty soon, I think we're going to that. So people have different expectations. Downtown, it just needs to be properly, you know, affected and, and started. And with regard to residential component, to a thriving urbanization, you know, people immediately think of redevelopment of downtown gentrification. Oh no, we're gonna displace people. I don't think that's the case right now in downtown North Miami because there's not people really living there or living in units. So I think you can create something on a blank sheet and I think it could be something really special. It doesn't have to be low cost housing or workforce housing. It could be market rate. As Laura said, there's obviously a huge demand for market rate uh, multifamily in North Miami with a 96% occupancy rate. That's phenomenal. It's one of the highest I, I can think of anywhere in the country right now. So. There's obviously a demand for quality product in North Miami, and I think it's a natural component if you want to have a successful downtown. You have a beautiful courtyard, you have the museum, you have an epicenter for activity. And so if you can build around it with proper retail and, 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 re and restaurants and other activities for people to go, as Jessica said, you need to have five, six, 10, 15 restaurants. They're not going to compete to hurt each other. They're going to all elevate each other to a higher level, bringing the foot traffic, bringing that central core area into play. And the, the natural, in my opinion, you can ask someone else, the natural component would be residential market rate, not, not low cost housing. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to Ms. Shredek, our keynote speaker, our speaking panelists that we get to work with. Um, almost every day I get to speak with, and most importantly, you guys the businesses of North Miami. Um, and a special thanks to Dr. Rice for hosting us again. Um, we're gonna continue to do lunch and learns like this, bring you out, most importantly, thank you for coming out. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're getting ready to try to do a major investment in North Miami. We just approved a bar referendum uh, to go forward an amount of $120 million. You know, our money where our mouth is as well. So, uh, thank you again for coming out, um, and we'll see you the next quarter. See you the next. Thank you.